So, we're going to talk about the saints right now, and I don't want to tell you anything you already know. So I want to start by asking, what, what do you think of when someone says the word saint? What does that word mean? Yes. I'm just going to do this. All right. I know this is like right in the line. That's weird. Okay. Um, performs, let's say, a miracle or two. Miracle. Yeah. And no one mentioned after death. I'll, I'll leave it for that right now. Well, we'll get to that, actually. Any, anything else? Does anyone else have any definition? Yes. Mmm, okay, come on, that's does good things. That's what most people mean. They'll say, you know, this person's a saint, you know, because they did their laundry and didn't leave it on the floor. Yes. Ooh, that's like, okay, a believer in God. This chalk is so short. That one's a bit longer. All right, I may, I may, you know, I'm gonna let this one die an honorable death first, and then I'll move on. Well, I want to talk a bit about what being a saint has to do with what we're doing today, with what it has to do with confirmation, actually. Uh, confirmation is confirmation is interesting. I, I remember asking my group last month what they thought confirmation was for them, and I got some good answers. Why are they being confirmed? Right? Is it because the culture says we should be confirmed? Is it like what happens at confirmation? What's, why is it so important to have confirmation? In most cultures, and a lot of you I think know this, because I see a lot of you are from different cultures. In a lot of cultures, in order to become a grown-up, to become an adult, to become a man or a woman, you have to go through a ritual. You have to go through, in Jewish culture, a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. In other cultures, you know, in New Guinea, people go out into the wilderness and they fight with animals and they come back and they become an adult, right? Now, our culture doesn't really have that very much, which is why you see so many adults who are still acting like children. And because they don't have any way of becoming adults. Uh, thank you, Dr. Williams, that. Thanks. Now, the reason why this is important, I think, and really interesting, is because God has a certain idea of what it means to be a human being. We all, we all talk about persons, right? We know that we're human persons. And persons are different than rocks or fish. I guess some people think dogs are persons. Some of them can, you know, get close. But the word person, it comes from an interesting root word. The word person, if anyone doesn't know, comes from the Greek word that they used for the masks that actors would wear when they played a role in a play. So a person, in a sense, is someone who's a character in a story, someone who plays a role, all right? Someone who, who has a, a, a part to play in a bigger plan. So a person, I think, a true person, is someone who's living out God's plan for them, because God has a plan for history. Actually, that's where the word history comes from. It's God's story. And until we sort of know what our role in this story is, I don't think we can be real persons. And actually, there are a lot of people who think that way. And part of why confirmation is so important is because it's our rite of passage into adulthood, into Christian maturity. It, it means you're no longer a child in the faith. Now you're an adult in the faith. Now you have responsibilities. Now you have a new strength. Move this over here. So I can actually write in the left of my way. There we go. Virtues. Does anyone know where the word virtue comes from? Okay. It's from the Latin word vir, which means adult. It means a man. To be virtuous doesn't mean to be a nice person who's kind of good, means well, does nice things, you know, is passive aggressive or something. A virtuous person is someone who's really good at being human. All right? the, the virtue of a knife, let's say, is to be really sharp. 
A sword has virtue, it's a good sword, it's a strong sword. So a virtuous human isn't a nice human, it's a good human, it's someone who's good at being human. That's why the virtues that Father Matthew talked about, and I'm glad to see so many of you kept your notes and refer back to your notes, that's why virtue is so important. Because virtue is what makes us good at being human, not just nice, but fulfilling our mission. Our mission in the world. It helps us to be really persons. And that's why confirmation is so important. Confirmation is God sealing you with his Holy Spirit. It's him giving you this infusion of virtue so that you can be a full Christian adult. So that you can really be human. Be better at being a person. So what is a saint in that sense? Well, a saint, for our purposes, and there are a lot of good definitions here. Someone who performs miracles, does good things, someone who believes in God. There's something that's common about all three of those, right? A saint is someone who accepts their mission from God. And that's why the saints are a good example for us. So you've got to be careful when you talk about the saints as good examples. One of, your, one of the questions deals with that, right? How are the saints good role models for us? Well, we're not supposed to do every single thing that the saints did. Not necessarily, anyways. St. Simon Stylites stood on a pole for 30 years. He climbed to the top of the pole and stood there and preached. And people brought him food. Now, God doesn't want you to do that necessarily. But what's important about the saints is that they accept their mission from God. Most of us don't, not fully. We start to. We'll do some of what God asks, but usually we have better plans than God. You know, we'll forgive your enemy. Well, no, that guy was a jerk. I've got better plans for him. I'm going to take revenge, or I'm going to stay angry at him, because he doesn't deserve it. I've got a better plan than God does. I love my enemies. Or sometimes God will say, stop and talk to that person. Sometimes you'll see someone who's sad, and you'll feel something of God saying, go talk to that person, they need you right now. But you've got better plans, you've got something else to do. A saint is someone who makes a habit out of accepting their mission. Like I said, to be a real person is to accept your mission, to accept your role in God's story, in God's play that he's writing. And a saint is someone who does that. In fact, that's why Mass is so important. But like, what does Mass have to do with your life? Why, why is Mass important to you being who you are? Well, do you know where the word mass comes from? I love where words come from. They tell you so much. It's from the same word as mission. Mass means to be sent. That's why Father will always say at the end, go forth and proclaim the good news. It's with, you're being sent out to fulfill what your mission is in the world. And that's important because that's what it means to be a human, like I said. And actually, if you look at most good stories, most myths especially, are all about what it means to find what your mission is in the world. Actually, most myths are based on rites of initiation. Star Wars is a really good example. It's an obvious example. It's about Luke Skywalker, who has no mission, doesn't know who he is, until he gets his mission, goes out and he suffers a bit, but he becomes who he was always supposed to be, right? A Jedi. That's, uh, that, that's why so many of our myths are so interesting to us, because they're about us. They're about the fact that we have a mission out there. And the saints provide a good example of what it means to live that out. And the reason why it's important that we have so many saints is because so many of us have so many different kinds of missions. And they're not all the same. And we have so many kind of different kinds of personalities. And I think that's important, too, because sometimes we don't feel like saints. Like, for example, some of us like to make jokes, right? We can, we can kind of joke around too much, we can be frivolous. And some people will say that's not saintly. Saints have to always be serious and always frown, right? They're, they're so weighed down by their guilt of the world that they can't have fun. Um, does anyone know about St. Lawrence? I haven't heard of him. St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence is the patron saint of comedians. Oh, thank you so much, Santa. Because St. Lawrence was martyred for the Christian faith. He died because he gave food to the poor. He didn't give it to the government. So they decided to kill him. This is a little grotesque, but they were going to fry him to death. They took a big gridiron out. A big grill. Like the kind of grill you come on a barbecue. And they heated it up and they laid St. Lawrence on it to, to fry him to death. 
And after a while of lying there, St. Lawrence looked up and said, this side is cooked, turn me over. And so for that reason, St. Lawrence, who was joking, making jokes even as he was burning to death for Christ, is the patron saint of comedians. So this is why it's so important to know about the saints, because we need to know that everything about being human, so be joking and laughing and having fun, and dating, everything about it, working in the world, all of it is something that can be part of our mission from God. But it's not unrelated to God. It's not, you know, we do something at church at times, and then we go off and live our lives. And we try to do a, night, a good job. No, no, it's more than that. God has a bigger plan for you than that. God actually has a mission in his mind, and there's a lot of theologians and folks who would say this, for each and every single person, he has an idea of you in his mind, available to you, the perfect kind of version of who you could be. And it might be different than what you think you could be. It might be better than what you think you could be. St. Ambrose was going to be a politician. In fact, he was a politician. He was a governor, an important man. But one day, the bishop died, and the crowds ran in and grabbed Ambrose and dragged him forcibly to the cathedral that made him the bishop. And that was his job for the rest of his life. So sometimes our plans aren't the same as God's plan for us. Sometimes they're more similar. Sometimes what we think we're called to is what we are called to. But what's important about being a saint is that we're following what God's mission is for us, not ours. Because we know that God knows better than we do sometimes. God knows the bigger story because he's writing it. There are, there are a lot of different um, things you can kind of say about this too, I think. The saint, that's, here's, here's another thing. I mean, fortunately, Joshua has cleaned this for me. So. Recycle this board. The word saint. Does anyone know what the word saint really means? Like what it originally means in the original Latin? It means set apart. It means different. Different from the crowd. Different than what everyone else is doing. Well, I think that this can mean a few different things. I mean, so, for example, your friends are people who are set apart for you. You have a special relationship with your friends, right? They're not the same as everyone else. They're, you kind of pick them. They're special. And the saints, in that sense, are friends of God. God loves everyone, but not everyone chooses to spend as much time with God. But the saints do. The saints are set apart. They're, they're picked. They're different. They're apart from everyone else. Now, that doesn't mean that they're weird all the time. Although sometimes it looks that way. Um, the world can be so crazy that being normal looks weird sometimes. But what it really means is that you're set apart into God's friendship. You've been picked to be, well, to follow what God wants for you. You're set apart in that sense. Like, like the way that when bread, there's bread that's picked and said, we're going to use this for mass. The way the water is taken and water, it's not just water anymore. It's not just something that you use to water your plants, or drink it or something, to quench your thirst. When a priest blesses that water, it becomes holy water. And holy means set apart. It's, it's got a special mission and a special power. It's not just water anymore. Now it has the power to make someone a child of God. Right? Now it has the power to bless someone, to heal someone. That, that water is now everything that water could be. You know? Water on its own, it can do some good things. But water that's holy water is what water is supposed to be. Water that doesn't just wash us clean, doesn't just quench our thirst, but it's water that heals and saves and blesses and, and kills vampires and things. You know? it, that, that's, that's what it means to be holy, right? Is to have this kind of special anointing from God to be everything that you could possibly be. Now, there's something I, that Santo has been saying that I kind of want to pick up on. So I don't keep saying, God is not boring. Now, I want to ask you guys, honestly. I want, I want you to be honest here, too. I don't want you to just say what you think I want to hear. Do you think the saints are boring? You're hesitating a bit. 
Why are, why are the saints not boring? They are like superheroes. Ah, oh, Paul. Oh, so how are they like superheroes? They have powers. Yes, they, that's 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 a very good analogy. The super the, the saints are like superheroes because they have powers. In fact, we have patron saints. We have saints who we go to for specific causes. Right? If you have a sore throat, you go to Saint Blaise. Saint Blaise is the one you ask to pray for you, and he could, perhaps he'll heal you. Saints have specific things you ask them for. Yes, yeah. Mm hmm And they're like superheroes because when they do that, they, they, have their, they have powers that they wouldn't otherwise have. And that doesn't just mean the power to heal. That doesn't just mean the power to levitate, like uh, St. Joseph of Compaquino. Doesn't just mean they have powers that look magical. It also means that they have powers to love, above and beyond what we're naturally capable of. Let's take St. Francis de Sales. Does anyone know about St. Francis de Sales? St. Francis de Sales once raised a dead baby to life because the baby had not been baptized yet. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's, that's really impressive. He also developed a new set of sign language so he could teach a deaf man about Jesus. Now, if you ask me, that's the bigger miracle. That, would, that takes more patience, that takes more love, that takes more strength, that takes more virtue than just healing a sick baby or healing a dead baby, right? The saints are like superheroes in that way. But you know, it's, it's funny you mention that because when it comes to superheroes, who's more interesting, Batman or Superman? To be honest, most people think Batman is more interesting than Superman. Someone put up their hand and tell me why. Yes? Batman is more like us, we can relate to him because he's not an alien. Yes, that's excellent. Batman chooses to be a hero. All right? But he has all our weaknesses, he has all of our failings. Yes, Joshua. That's true, which means it's harder for him. Batman doesn't have any superpowers of his own. It's harder for him to do what he does, yes. Batman is special? He is. Well, he has a special story, a story of anyway. And the saints can be boring because I think sometimes we think of the saints as being more like Superman. They're these special aliens who have superpowers that we don't have. But actually, the saints had to struggle like the rest of us did. They had to choose their mission and fight for it. One, one saint I really like is St. Moses the Black. St. Moses the Black was the leader of a criminal gang. They were like robbers and marauders and murderers. Right? And, he, and he found Jesus, and he became a monk, and he did his best to live in peace. But there's this, this, this story that one day some criminals broke into his monastery with, with swords. And he disarmed all of them, and beat them up, and dragged them to the chapel where the other monks were praying. And the monks were horrified. Here's Moses the Black, bringing in these criminals and saying, I don't think it's Christian of me to hurt them. What should I do? Now that's a guy with a dark past. A guy who's capable of being a tough gangster. Who's struggling really, really hard to be like Jesus. Because he's like us. It's someone who could have been something, but he's trying to fulfill God's mission for him. He's trying to fulfill what God has in mind for him. He's trying to be a person to play his part in God's story. And that's true if you read a lot of the saints. The great thing about some of these saints is that we have their writings, and we can read what they went through. So Mother Teresa. Who knows what people have been talking about Mother Teresa in the last few years? Has anyone been following that? Mother, Mother Teresa, everyone knows of her as this great saint. She did so much for God. Right? She worked in the poor, she worked in the slums, she worked with lepers, without any regard for herself. She was known as very loving. Great saint. But after she died, they found her writings. And she said that she hadn't felt God in over 30 years. 
that she had just felt darkness and loneliness and depression. So that's someone who's a bit more like Batman than Superman, right? But she looks like Superman. Because she always trusted God. She always deferred to God's grace. It's the virtues that we get in our confirmation. Right? The confirmation, it strengthens us in that way. It confirms us. It gives us these virtues of the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't make it any easier for us. We still have to struggle. We still have to fight through it and grow into being human. That's what being human means. I mean, if there's one thing I really want you to take away from this, then this is part of what it means that you're called to be a saint is that being a saint doesn't mean being Superman. It means being someone more like Batman, someone who is a human, who's being the best human they can possibly be. But that doesn't mean it's all for your own strength. Because being human means to be in relationship to God. That's what, that's what Jesus teaches us, by the fact that he's both God and man. It means someone who's everything they could be because they trust in God and rely on him for power. This is a lot of what Sancho was talking about this morning of grace and the life of grace. This is why this is important for us. It's so that we can be who we're supposed to be. Well, I've, I've taken up a half hour of your time. I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about this a bit further when I talk about Mary. But for now, I just want you to reflect on this over lunchtime. It's like, what does it mean for me to be a saint? What could it mean for me to be a saint? And what do I think of when I hear about the saints? Like St. Teresa. This church is named after St. Teresa. I encourage you to learn about her. Anyways, thank you.